When people think of Argentina and the World Cup, for many decades, it's always been the image of Diego Maradona as Argentina's hero and savior for his incredibly iconic 1986 World Cup campaign. But just last year, Lionel Messi had finally been able to do the same. Once again, bringing Argentina to the peak of world football and bringing long-awaited glory to his country. But if you look closely at the Argentinian crest, you'll see that Messi's win in 2022 was in fact the third World Cup win for Argentina. Because for many newer or more casual football fans, it's actually a common misconception that Maradona was the first who brought the title of world champions to his country. But the truth is there was in fact another who did it eight years before. A man who was the original hero of his nation and no exaggeration single-handedly carried his country to the top. A man who, if not for his prolific goal scoring, would have given the Netherlands their their very first World Cup title. And this largely forgotten Argentinian legend was named no other than Mario Kempes, the only Argentinian in World Cup history to be named champion, top scorer, and best player in the same World Cup. Something not even Maradona or Messi were able to do. But football history can be quite cruel at times, especially when we talk about the greatest legends of the game in the 70s and 80s. Because despite his legendary efforts and achievements, the world has largely forgotten Mario Kempes. So to take a closer look at his story, we have to go all the way back to the 1970s. Because while growing up, Mario Kempes' father was also a footballer. However, he was never really good enough to make it to the top level. And you could say it was a good and bad thing for the young Kempes. On the bright side, Mario Mario inherited his father's love and passion for the game. But on the downside, if you weren't at the absolute top division, footballers were paid incredibly poorly in those days. And thus, Mario's father had a very difficult time financially supporting his family. So much to the extent that the young Kempes had to get a part-time job during his younger teenage years. Because back then, especially in Argentina, the football business was not as close to what it is today. Poverty loomed and football was a fantasy dream and was absolutely not a realistic option back then like it is for many prodigies of today who were scouted and signed by professional academies at incredibly early ages. And it wouldn't be until he was 17 years old after continuously training that he would make it to his first trial for a professional club. Because thanks to the contacts of the owner and his part-time carpentry job, the young Mario Kempes would be connected to the youth coach of Instituto Atletico Central de Cordoba. And he would go on to impress the coaches with his goal-scoring instinct very quickly, scoring two goals in just 15 minutes, with the scouts being so impressed that they didn't hesitate to sign him. And it was this moment that marked the beginning of a young legend. During his one and only year with Instituto Cordoba, he would score an insane 78 goals in 81 matches, which would eventually earn him a promotion to the first team, finally playing at the very top against the most elite Argentinian footballers, where he would go on to score 11 goals in 13 appearances for the club as a teenager playing in the Argentinian Premier Division which would eventually catch attention from another club, Rosario Central, where he would sign for next. And at just 19 years old, Mario Kempes would finish as the third top scorer of the league. And back then in Argentinian football, there had never been a young prodigy that was scoring goals as often as Mario Kempes. He would start to play as a forward on the left side of the attack, becoming one of the highest goal scorers in the world with 107 goals in 123 official matches. And by 1975, Rosario Central had not only one of the best scorers in Argentina, but in the entire world. In fact, he would go on to score four goals in a single match in four separate matches in his final year for the Argentinian club, with the name Mario Kempes slowly making its way around the world. And by this time, Mario Kempes's move to European football was inevitable. Initially, Real Madrid had tried to bid for him, because remember there was another Argentinian legend, Alfredo Di Stefano, who had already made history in absolute glory for the Spanish club. And of course, they would look to Mario Kempes as a possible successor. However, it would be Valencia that would eventually offer more money for the Argentinian striker, offering what was back then $500,000 for signing. And half a million dollars in 1976 was an insane amount, but Kempes was worth every penny. And at Valencia, Mario Kempes would pick up where he left off from Rosario Central, scoring goals for fun. 
because in his first two seasons for the Spanish club, Kempes would win back-to-back -back Pichichi trophies for being the top goal scorer in La Liga, even going on to score 39 goals in 46 appearances, being such a clinical and deadly striker that Valencia fans would nickname him El Matador, or in English, the killer, because that's exactly what Mario Kempes was. He was infamous for scoring crucial goals, whether it be in big matches or in the last final moments of the game. El Matador would somehow find a way to score, effectively killing the opposition's hopes. And more often than not, in many occasions, he would be scoring the only goal of the match as well. Because while Diego Maradona was just starting off his career as a teenage sensation, it was Mario Kempes who was quite literally the six foot or 183 centimeter version of Maradona, dribbling through defenders with ease, and eventually even scoring more career goals than his junior Maradona. And ironically enough, there's this famous saying by Diego Maradona that goes like this, once you are too tall at Argentine's academy, we already know you won't be a good footballer. We don't tell you because you'll be hurt and it'll break your spirit. Most of these players who are very tall are somewhat doing other professions. It's impossible for taller guys to practice close control at full speed. We believe in low gravity that will make you impossible to be stopped. If you are too tall, you better be very good or we can try to play you as a goalkeeper or defender. Other countries, they prefer to have giants only to score corners and play boring long balls. But that's actually incredibly strange for Maradona, considering that Mario Kempes was pretty tall and doing the exact opposite. But perhaps Maradona didn't really like Kempes, as the 19-year-old rising star would be left out of Argentina's 1978 World Cup squad, with then-Argentina manager Cesar Minotti describing Kempes' playing style, saying, He's strong, has skill, creates space, and shoots hard. He's a player who can make a difference. And like I said, watching Kempes, he really was like a taller version of Maradona, with that close control and dribbling just running through defenders, and scoring goals even easier than he did. Because in the 1978 World Cup, the first and only World Cup to be held in Argentina, Mario Kempes was the only foreign-based player in the Argentinian national team. In fact, some might say his origins are not even that of Argentina, as his mother's side had Italian roots and his father's family came from Germany. But anyways, conspiracies aside, Mario Kempes would absolutely dominate the 1978 World Cup with El Matador or The Killer really living up to his nickname, as Mario Kempes would go on to score a brace against Poland, even going on to pull a Luis Suarez by stopping a goal that would have gone in using his hand, which would of course give Poland a penalty, but they would unfortunately miss, giving Argentina a comfortable 2-0 win. So yes, even before Maradona's hand of God, Argentina had Mario Kempes doing the same thing. But going on to the semi-final, Kempes would score another brace, this time against Peru, once again giving them a comfortable win and advancing all the way to the final. But this time, they would be against an absolutely stacked Netherlands squad, with legends like Nieskins, Rezenbrink, Rep, and Han. The Dutch had even gone on to destroy countries like Austria 5-1, as well as beat one of the favorites, Italy 2-1. But during the final, it would be no other than Mario Kempes, who opened up the match scoring in the 38th minute. And after a long-fought match, the Dutch would equalize in the 82nd minute. But of course, it would be no other than El Matador, who would score a game-crushing goal in the 105th minute of the match. True to his name, the killer was scoring the most crucial goals, absolutely crushing the Dutch at that very moment, eventually going on to finally win, where Kempes would end the tournament with six goals as the top scorer and would be named the best player of the entire tournament, matching Garincha and De Rossi as the only players to ever win the World Cup while being named the tournament's best player and a top goal scorer. And don't forget that Kempes was also the top scorer in Spain that season. This incredible year would name him the South American Footballer of the Year and the recipient of the 1978 Ons d'Or. Yes, Mario Kempes won all these accolades, probably having one of the best individual years in footballing history. And Kempes would return to Valencia after the tournament to only further continue his goal scoring, helping his club win a historic Copa del Rey final against Real Madrid, then the very following 1979-1980 season, to throne the mighty Arsenal and win the UEFA's Winners' Cup, then to end it all off winning the 1980 UEFA Super Cup against Nottingham Forest. 
eventually going on to score 125 goals in 187 appearances during his six seasons with the club. And although Mario Kempes would only spend a total of 10 years in Spain, by the time the 1986 World Cup came around, which was the World Cup that Diego Maradona would win, Kempes was already 33 years old and well past his prime. But regardless, throughout his career, he would score a total of 334 goals, outscoring the number of career goals his junior Diego Maradona would eventually score. So to everyone watching, let's not let his story be forgotten. And remember that before Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi, there was Mario Kempes, the player who gave Argentina their very first World Cup and the original Hand of God.